Now, what happened? Adam and Eve had to leave this garden. They had to now toil and they had to face all the curses. The serpent was cursed, the woman was cursed, the man was cursed, by he had to till the ground and the ground was cursed. Can you imagine they had to till the ground with no rain because only a thousand years or more after that, the flood came. So they, they left for a terrible situation. But remember, the guarantees were in place. And when God came to the garden, they were hiding from the presence of God. You know what God did? Adam, where are you? They heard his voice. There's one translation says, they heard his voice walking in the garden. Where are you? Where are you? Now that is exactly what is happening today. His voice is still walking in the garden, calling, where are you? Where are you? But remember, the problem is they left the garden. So here they were in wilderness. They left the garden in the wilderness. But I, I want to bring you back to, he says, who is this that's coming through the wilderness? whose clothes are red, stained with blood from Basra. <laughs> oh, come on. So Christ came through the wilderness looking for his bride. Now, this is what the generational history in the Bible is actually all about. Man plunged himself into this place where he had to choose everything. And remember what I told you? That the evil will always overwhelm the good. Don't underestimate what God is doing because darkness can never overshadow light. So eternity and God's uh, eternal spirit works into this dark situation where evil always overcome good. And he brings light into this place <laughs> where darkness cannot overtake light. So we need to understand when God said, for God who commanded to shine the light have now shone in your heart <laughs> the glorious illumination of the light of God right in your heart in an earthen vessel. So in your hopeless situation, he comes and he says, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. And you know what? It's not on the outside. It's right on our inside. But how did this happen? Now, men now lived in choices. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but people that make wrong choices, they get out of it, they make the wrong choice again, especially when it comes to marriage. It's always, you know, there are rules. It's, this is not doctrine I'm teaching, but I see it so many times, people just making the wrong decisions, the wrong decisions, the wrong decisions, choices, choices, choices. So man was like really the first one that made the wrong choice was Cain. He said, Cain, sin is lying at your door. Satan is there, lying at the door. Do not open it. Come on. This is the same story that Israel did. Because they were given the commands, and then the law was added in the form of a tabernacle that was the foreshadow of Christ, the shadow of the heavenly things. This was the picture going down. It's a shadow. So what is going to happen on a cross is so bright that it caused a shadow, but the light is towards the front. And you know what they did? They had three doors, um, the, the gate, the door, the veil. And what happened? Sin lied at the door. They were so infested with serpent seed, the same as Cain. So it's all these stories are over and over and over. Cain opened the door to sin. And now the, the ground even cries for blood. But God will never leave or forsake his creation. So... <laughs> to a point where it was so bad on the earth after Cain opened the door for sin, there were giants born. Giants. The whole place was full of giants and they were full of great sins. They, it, it, it was terrible to a point that God said, yeah, maybe I should not have made it. But what he did, he did not leave and forsake creation. He took care of the first curse, which was water. And he saved eight people, which means I'm going to bring a new beginning. He saved the whole of creation because two by two by two and seven pairs of the clean animals. He literally saved his whole creation. But remember, they're out of the garden. The garden is not there anymore. They're away from the presence of God. 
God's spirit is now working. And just before the flood, he said, my spirit is not forever going to strive with man. My spirit cannot do it from the outside. And then he destroyed the waters. And then he sent out a crow. The crow came back. Then he sent out a dove. And the dove returned. And he sent a dove for the third time. These are all pictures of what's going to happen in this next world that is just seen the morning. This sending out of the crow and the dove and the dove literally points to what is going to happen. He first called Noah and Noah became a husbandman. You know what he did? He planted a vineyard. In Isaiah, we read that God planted a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. And what he did now, he surrounded it. This vineyard of Noah was open. The first thing he did, he became drunk. And he revealed his nakedness like Adam. And it was like the crow that he sent out. It was not the right thing. And then we all know about Babel and oh, Babylon, Babel, that God confused their languages. And how God called Abram out of the city of the Ur of the Chaldees. This Ur was like a son of Babel because they went and they, after they scattered, they built cities everywhere. But there was this small city, Ur of the Chaldees. And God said, Abraham, come out. And Abraham said, yes, I'll move. He believed God against hope. He believed in hope. And he moved out the city and he was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. And he had foundations. Now the foundations came in the line of Abraham because in Abraham there was two seeds forming. He says in Genesis 17, 7, in your seed after you in their generations and in your seed after you. So if we go to the seed line of Christ, the genealogy of Christ, it's Jesus, son of David, son of Abraham. So there was a spiritual seed line that worked through the natural seed line. Now in the natural seed line, it is crazy. God gave them the choice again. Moses said, show me your glory. All have sinned and fell short of the glory. Now in Exodus 33, 11, you will see the glory is his presence. It's his name. It's who he is. He's merciful and he's gracious and he's righteous and he's quick to forgive. And he said, my goodness will pass by him. And his goodness is all through human history from beginning to end. 